How's it going? This is May with Smoke Free Source, here to talk to you about the iTaste SVD. Another one of the big contenders in the variable voltage category, we have here the iTaste SVD by Noken. I've learned that SVD stands for Superior Vaping Device, and that's a bold claim from the guys at Inokin, so let's find out if they're right and get this thing unboxed. What I have here is the kit. Inside we have two telescopic tubes, a battery cap, two iClear 30 atomizer tanks equipped with metal tips, the main piece here which houses the microprocessor, and three atomizer replacement heads. But that's all. There's no battery and of course no charger, so unless I already have a battery, I'm obligated to drop around another $20 for a battery and charger combination. And that's a bit of a downer. I'd rather that they'd taken a hint from the EVIC kit and included a battery but not the tank. The iClears are decent tanks, but honestly, I use anything but these tanks when vaping with this device. I'm just not a huge fan of the VB Nova style atomizers. Having to tilt your device and make sure the wick is actually wet before vaping becomes tedious after a while. If you don't follow this little ritual before taking a puff, you'll end up with an unsavory burnt taste in your mouth. Now I'm not trying to bash the tanks. They do work fine if you're okay with putting up with the tilting. And the swivel tip is kind of cool, but it feels more like a novelty than something that actually makes life any easier. Eventually I wanted it to just stay put and stop moving around. Some people might find this tip to be great though, but also worth noting is that this tip isn't a 510 tip. It has threading, so you have to screw it in or out. And unless you have other tips with threading, you're stuck using this one with your eye clear. But overall it works. This pair of telescopic tubes allows for you to use a range of 16mm diameter batteries. 18350 with the smaller tube, and 18500, 18650, or even a pair of stacked 18350s for the larger one. Normally what I use with it is an 18650 IMR, which gives me a decent amount of battery life, but also turns this unit into a really long object. This actually gives me a chance to talk about something that I really like about this device, the threading. It's incredibly smooth and is yet to jam on me. Although I have talked to a couple people who find issues with the threading, so I don't know if they just got a dud or something, but my personal device is held up for a couple of months and the telescopic piece still works smoothly. It's very finely constructed metalwork. Real quick. An oddity that stands out is that this battery cap on the bottom is different finish from the rest of the unit. It's nicely made, but it just feels a little off and sticks out from the otherwise synchronized look of the tube and the center console piece. Three clicks and you'll get this red, yellow, green flashing to signal that the unit is indeed on. The display screen will also briefly announce on. Let's take a minute to talk about this display screen. The LED is clear and everything about it works fine. What's odd about it is that it's raised, whereas devices such as the Provari and pretty much any other device with a display on it, have a screen that's flush with the unit. Again now, we've got three buttons to work with. This plastic button, the main one, is used for power on and off and firing up the unit. These metal buttons, labeled plus and minus, are used for changing the voltage and power levels. But if you try pressing these when you first turn it on, you'll get a lock reading on the screen, and nothing happens. Then you have to keep on holding the buttons down until another screen appears, which will be either voltage or power setting. Now, successfully unlocked, it'll remain that way unless you take out the battery. You can change, in this case, the voltage up or down. And, should you wish to lock the unit, just repeat the process. As for changing the voltage, if you keep pressing the plus button, eventually the setting will reach the highest level, which is 6 volts, and then round robin back to the lowest setting, 3 volts. The same goes for pressing the minus button, but in a reverse order. Right now we're in voltage mode. If you want to switch to power mode, you follow these engravings on the side of the device. Let's take a quick look. We have VM, which is voltage mode. We have PM, which is power mode. And then an omega symbol, which stands for ohms at the bottom. So say we want to switch to power mode. Hold down the plus button and the power button for about 5 seconds and the screen will display this PO. You have to wait until the screen goes away before you can adjust the levels. The same goes for when you want to change the voltage mode. 
The power levels range all the way from 3 watts to 15 watts, and you can change the level in 0.5 watt increments. Next, if you want to check the resistance in the atomizer, hold down both the plus and the minus buttons for about 5 seconds, and there you go, 2.1 ohms. That's it for navigating. I really like how simple and intuitive it is to switch between modes. And since the unit has these engravings on it, you won't have trouble remembering which buttons do which. But in terms of pure functionality, the SVD powers through splendidly. The range of voltage and power is great for setting it up according to whatever atomizer you're using. Its main downfall is its long length. Even then, it's worth it to attain the power output that it generates. Lastly, being durable as it is, you won't have to worry too much about dropping it. Although, I still don't suggest that you treat it carelessly. But it can handle a little abuse, thanks to the full metal construction. Even the display screen is protected decently, because of how this metal rises above the screen itself and isn't flush with it. It may throw off the look somewhat, but does offer some more protection. One last thing. This being a variable voltage device, of course it comes with some safety features that won't allow you to use atomizers with low resistance. Anything lower than about the 1.2 range won't work on this. The light will glow an angry little red and nothing happens. So if you're planning on using a rebuildable atomizer on this device, be sure to wrap it so that the resistance will be compatible with the unit itself. Is it amazing? Uh, almost. It's just really big. If you want something to keep at home and use for some power vaping sessions, then this is just right for you. Throw in an 18650, sit back and relax, and the SVD will take good care of you. On the other hand, taking this along with you for a night out might not be such a great idea. You won't die if you do, but I could see it getting in the way or becoming obtrusive. So tell us what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, always vape appropriately.